Hey YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to create a two-dimensional maze symbol in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with we've set up an artboard and we're going to go up to the ellipse tool up here and holding shift and left clicking on the artboard we're just going to drag and create a circle. Now we're going to swap the fill and the stroke because we don't want any fill but we do want to retain the stroke and I'm just going to increase the weight a little bit. This can be whatever you like. So for our maze there's going to be four different rings and this is going to be the innermost ring. So let's just make sure that's nice and central. Now with that selected if you go to object path and down to offset path tick the preview box and then we want to create an offset. Now it might take a bit of fiddling around here and just trying different numbers. Effectively, we want the black rings to be the same width as the white rings, or for that matter, the white rings that we're about to create to be the same width as the black ones. So if I just increase this, okay, you can see that's too big. The gap here is far too large. Let's try 60. That's much closer. Let's try and be super precise. Oh wow, this is a new level of precision here. And you may want to zoom in to do this. Uh, it does help, just makes it a little bit easier. Okay, so that looks about right to me. So you can see that the black rings or the white rings are the same width as the black ones. So now we just select the new one that we created and we do exactly the same again. We go up to object, down to path, offset path. It remembers the 59 pixel offset that we did before. So just click okay. And exactly the same again, one last time, we go up to Object, Path, Offset Path, and then hit OK. So we've got our four rings now. Now what we're going to do is left click up here and select the Line Segment tool. And just holding Shift, just draw a straight line. Like that, absolutely fine. So now we want to centralize this to the artboard as well. It's very important to make sure everything is central because the parts of the maze that intersect with one another will be coming out from the center. So this is quite important. So let's just center that vertically and horizontally. There we go. So if we zoom in on this, so we can go up to object with this line selected, expand, leave fill and stroke selected, and then just click OK. And then holding Alt and Shift, we're going to left click and drag to make a copy. Now you can see here it's not snapping. So let's do that again, but after we've turned our smart guides on. So this is very important because you want this to snap exactly in place because it will make what comes up next considerably easier, not having to go back and line everything up if it wasn't correct. So we want one of those either side. And these white ones, for now, let's just pick any color. The important thing is that we select a color and we make sure global is ticked because we're going to want to change that color at the end without having to click on each individual instance of red and manually change it. So it's very important you tick that global box. Okay. So if you press Command Y on the Mac or Control Y on the PC, you can have a look. You can see here, perfectly lined up, great. So let's just select these three lines. Oh, make sure we don't select any of the rings. Just select those three there. Go up to Object, and we'll just group those together. We can select the rings now. Go up to Object, Expand. Again, Leave Fill and Stroke ticked, and just click OK. So you should have something that looks like this now. Okay, so now we're going to select the three lines in the middle, go up to edit and select copy, and then paste in place. And we're just going to keep pasting in place. So it's just pasting them one on top of the other. And we're going to need a few of these because these are going to be what we use to create our intersects, the actual parts of the maze themselves. So now you'll see that you should be able to drag off and you've got lots and lots of these underneath. So let's create our first one. 
We're going to left click and hold shift and we're going to drag this to the right. And then you can use the anchor points here in the selection tool just to drag that in place. Now for this, we've got one either side, one of these red lines either side. Using the direct selection tool, that's this one here, pick either one and simply click delete. Then you can select these two shapes, go up to object, ungroup, and then holding the alt key, so it, it adjusts the width from both directions, just make sure it extends out into the white. And then you can change that to white itself. And then you can select it again if you like, and you can drag it in. So there we go, we've created part of our maze already. So that was a, a horizontal one. Let's try a vertical one. So we'll select another one of these. We'll select the rotate tool and holding shift, just rotate it 90 degrees. And holding shift again, we'll just drag it straight up and we'll do one on the inner ring this time. So again, pick one of these with the direct selection tool, just delete, turn the other one white, Make sure that they're ungrouped. And then just adjust as necessary. So you can see how our maze now is starting to form. So let's do another one over here. So we're gonna rotate. Let's try one on a 45 degree angle. So holding shift, it'll snap to that 45 degree angle. And again, holding shift while we drag with the selection tool, it will keep us on that 45 degree angle. So let's do one on the outside now. And again, we can just use these anchor points to just drag that in, delete one of these, select object, ungroup. The red becomes the white. And we can just drag that out. And there we go. We've got our entry point into the maze. So let's do another one. Let's do one that isn't horizontal, isn't vertical, and isn't on a 45 degree angle. It's a random angle. So how would we do that? Well, the first things first, we'll select one of our, our line sets in the middle. And with the rotate tool, we'll just manually rotate to something like this. Now, when we drag this out into the maze itself, we need to make sure that it points back to the center. This is very important. So when we drag it out, we want to drag it out and keep it along these lines. So something like this. And then you can just extend that back just to check it's roughly pointing to the middle. It doesn't have to be exact, but the more accurate it is, the less likely it's going to look a bit odd or a bit out of place. So again, we'll delete one of these and just ungroup these two. The red one becomes white. And there we go. We can see our maze starting to take shape. Let's do a few more. So remember we're dragging out, deleting one, ungrouping, turning the red one to white, and then just adjusting the white one. And once you've done a few of these, you'll definitely become a lot quicker. Object, ungroup, turn the red to white, and then just adjust. And I think we'll just do one more. We'll do another, another odd angle. So we'll just remember, we're just dragging out and trying to sort of keep it pointing as much to the middle as we can. We 
can just check that. Yeah, that's roughly pointing back to the center. We're going to delete one of the red ones, ungroup the remaining two, and then we'll just turn this red one to white, and then we just adjust. And then once you're happy and you've got your completed maze shape, you can select the ones in the middle and just delete those. And if you press Command Y on the Mac or Control Y on the PC, you should have something that looks vaguely like this, albeit your own composition. It may not look exactly the same as mine, but we should have all these all these rectangles positioned around our maze. 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 So what we want to do now is tidy up the shape and work towards completing it. So at the moment, if I were to lay a coloured background behind, for example, you'll see that if we wanted to use this maze in a piece of artwork or a composition, we've got these bit, these white bits here. So that won't do. So actually, if we just add this background here, we'll just fill the artboard there. Make sure it's set to the back layer, so object, arrange, center back, and then object and lock. We'll lock that. So this will, this will make it a lot easier when we're finishing up our composition to see if everything is correct. Okay, so what we want to do now is select the magic wand tool and we'll select every instance of black. We're going to go up to the Pathfinder palette on the right and then select Unite. That's the top left one. And that should bring all of these shapes together. So if I show you the effect that has in preview mode, you can see now that all the black rectangles join up with the rest of the maze. So now we're left with just the white ones. So we can select all of these white ones, holding shift to select multiple objects. And we're going to go up to object, arrange, and we're going to bring them all to the front. This is very important. Then we're going to select the unite option in the Pathfinder palette, and then go up to object and compound path, and then select make. So that turns all these individual shapes effectively into one path, which is important because what we're going to do next is select everything and when I say everything, we should have two parts to this composition. We should have the black maze and the white circles with the circles on top. Select absolutely everything and then go up to the Pathfinder palette and click minus front or subtract. And you'll see that it will knock those white shapes out from your maze. And if you press Command Y on the Mac, Control Y on the PC, you should have something that looks like this. And it's best practice just to finish up any work like this by tidying up those shapes. Just so if you did need to use this maze in another piece of artwork, you don't have any, any white boxes or anything just kind of left unfinished that might look a bit odd. So now we can, we can select our maze. I'm gonna make mine white. I'm gonna unlock the background and I'm going to change the background color to black. And there we go, we've created a two-dimensional May symbol in Illustrator. As always guys, I hope you really enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, please hit that like button. Be sure to share and subscribe for more videos, and I'll see you next time. Take care.